In this quick tutorial, we're going to do a SQL Server audit and we're going to review the, the audit log uh, to ensure that it's working correctly. Uh, at times you need to do these types of configurations for data security uh, to identify breaches and misuse of data, uh, misuse and misaccess of data in your organization. Uh, today I'm going to do this with my adventure work sample database that I've showed in other videos on how to set up and what I'm going to be concerned about auditing is my credit card uh, database table. With our servers the first thing we need to do is actually create an audit and we can do that a couple different ways. We can create an audit with using uh, the GUI interface if we right click and do a new audit and we can see all the options and such that are needed here uh, to set up. Uh, additionally if we end up filling out this and scripting it we can see what the SQL Server script looks like. Uh, I like to script my operations just in general uh, so I have them for future use and all. So instead of using this wizard uh, and filling, filling out the form and all, I'm going to go over the script really quickly with everyone as far as creating the actual audit for the server level. So we're going to do a new query and the piece to be concerned about here is when you do your new query you have to do the server audit in the master database you can't do it in a user database so you want to make sure you do use master first as part of your command or in double check that you're in that session as well uh, so for this audit what we're going to do is we're going to use the create command create server audit is what we're doing and we're going to give it a name and I'm just going to give it my server audit as the actual name. Uh, we're going to specify that we want this to go to a file and you saw some of this in that wizard pop-up. Uh, so here the file path that I'm going to use is going to be my C temp location uh, in a folder called my server audit that I already created previously. Now uh, again, in real world scenarios, you're not going to put this to your C drive. You're going to want to make sure you have it in a secured location and ensure that you have good file space and all for um, rotating of audit logs and, uh, and, uh, and allowing them to be backed up and stored off, off site and to other locations, uh, whatever your audit needs are. The max size parameter is important. If you set it to zero, that's going to give it to be unlimited size and that's never a good thing. So I'm going to say 10 megabytes. We don't like huge audit files um, or anything because of opening them and looking through them could be very difficult unless you're sending this information to some other type of log storage like Splunk which is another good practice to consider. The next parameter I care about is max roll over file. So essentially if I don't, if I set this to the um, unlimited parameter that's there, um, it's a, the files in the space can be uh, very cumbersome. So I like to keep 10 easily accessible, just out of a best practice. Uh, and when it hits 10, what happens is it's just going to start over again. So again, why you roll this and move these audit files to another location is because if a hacker or somebody maliciously got into your machine and they wanted to cycle your system enough times, you're going to end up losing the audit trail. So you want to make sure that you're offloading them elsewhere uh, for security purposes and don't keep them just in the, the main location. The other parameter I'm going to set is reserve disk space and for that for now I'll set off. Uh, and now another last parameter here is going to be the delay and the queue delay is going to be the amount of time before it actually processes it to the log and it's in milliseconds so if we do a thousand we're going to end up with uh, with basically a one second delay. So we'll go with the one second delay and then on failure we want it to continue so we don't want to um, not have it logging so if it fails we want it to actually continue and keep going. So if we run this here and again I'll make sure I use the use command to make sure it's in the right database. We're going to get this server audit specification created and if we go under audits and we right click here and refresh you're going to see it creates it and expand 
you'll see my server audit's there now, and it's automatically disabled by default. If we're going to actually have it being used in use, we got to enable it. So if we right click and enable it, that's going to activate it. And you should see the success message that activates this audit. That's the first piece. Now, now nothing's audit on my server yet at this time until I create a specific specification. So in this server audit specifications, there's nothing there. If I right click again, can I use the GUI interface, kind of the wizard approach to create this? I certainly can. But I like, again, have the script uh, to do this. So what I'll do here is I'm going to now essentially create um, in audit specification and I'm going to do this in my uh, AdventureWorks database because that's got the credit card tables so I'll remove the use command for master and I'm going to create now uh, a database audit specification audit underscore cc underscore tables will be the name so to me that's basically I'm auditing my credit card tables or in this case I really only have one so I'll just call it audit underscore cc table and it's going to be applied to my server audit that I just created so for server audit my server audit and I'm going to add the operation that I want to actually audit and it's going to be just select statements. I just care about read activities. I could do it for updates, deletes, inserts as well and I could just separate each one with a comma here if I want if I wanted it for other operations. But I'm just going to do select on sales dot credit card and it's going to be by the database owner for now. Uh, and then with state equals on so it's just going to audit that activity for that um, for that actual SQL Server table for um, for that actual DBO owner. So and the status is going to be turned on. So we're going to run this command, and it's going to see that gets created successfully as well. So now what we want to do is we want to actually test this. Is this actually working? So what I'll do first is I'll show you my folder, and I have my folder my server audit and You'll see when I activated it here, it created this file just a couple minutes ago. And it's empty right now. And we'll take a look at it. It's got 0 KB. And if I can get it to open uh, with Notepad++ real quickly. You'll see that it's got some activity in it currently. And you'll see it's there. But what we want to do, because that's not really readable for us, be, uh, because it's a SQL Server audit file, so it's not a text file for Notepad++, we want to do now is we actually want to uh, create a command to actually uh, go through and look at it. Uh, additionally, we want to actually write a command on our, our credit card table first. So I'm going to get rid of that create statement. Let's just do a select star from sales dot credit card. Now that we're auditing that table, what we'll do is return all the results really quickly. Okay, so the results are being returned, and now let's check the audit log and see what we it adds in it. So to check an audit log in SQL Server, we can write a select star from um, and using the system built-in function, which is function underscore get audit file and what we have to do is specify the location of the audit file so in this case it's going to be C temp uh, and then the folder that it's in my server audit fix my okay and since that's the location that it's in what I'm going to do is say, let's just get all the files that are currently there, which the asterisk will do that for us, although we only have one currently until it gets to that 10 megabyte limit and overflows. So if we use this command here, we should see in our query what has been written to this audit file so far.
Uh, so you'll see that we have an entry for when this was activated the first entry and when I open that up in Notepad++ that's what all of that uh, information was showing me that it was activated it looked very messy because Notepad++ couldn't read the log file uh, and then this other activity here um, will show what I had actually done uh, and it shows the session the server where it was done from uh, you see all these different details the instance and you see my command right the select command that was actually audited so if I was to write this command again and check that audit log right you're gonna see a third entry and if I was to do it let's just say we change it around a little bit let's just say top 10 star or if we wrote a where clause you're gonna see we should have a fourth entry and you see the action ID, the SLs are indicating the selects. Uh, you see my session ID, my information, all of that is being audited. My account information, where I've done it from and all. So we have a good record of what's happening. It keeps the statement. Okay, let's run. Uh, and here we're seeing the file that's being read for the audit specification. So that's how a SQL Server audit and audit specification gets created and again this is all for security and purposes of understanding and keeping track of who's accessing your data in your system and you see that the application I did it was from SMS and also it's got really good valuable information that you can do for compliance purposes uh, and it's not that difficult to set up so like I said I enjoy keeping the commands and the scripts so I can apply them uh, in the future. Now again for just testing purposes I don't want to uh, I don't want to keep this running all of the time because uh, I don't want to fill up my disk drive or anything so when I'm done just learning how to do this and understanding it what I'll typically do is I will disable it or I will actually remove it but in this case I'll just disable it. I hope you found this tutorial on setting up audits in SQL Server useful. Uh, if you have any comments or anything, uh, please feel free to put them below. I hope you subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can also reach out to me by going to professorwolf.com and uh, find my contact information there. Thank you.